Yo, what up, Internet? Welcome to uh, Bricks and Beer Slavic Style 85. You'll see why in a second. Nice beer. Today's beer is cheap. Cheers, everybody. It's a really cheap beer. It's good. It's not as good as this. It's also not as cheap as this. I should have made a containment zone. Oh well. So that was pretty crazy, right? Yeah. Um, I guess we should talk about that. That's not the whole episode. There's a little more. Not too much more. Um, that's a bunch of Lego. For free. I'm dumping on my floor in the middle of the night. Uh, I can't tell you where I got it. It's a dude. He donated it to me. Um, I'm obviously super flattered. Like Getting free shit is awesome. And this episode is not going to be solely about the humble brag about all this fucking free Lego I got. Uh, but I thought it might be interesting for you guys to sort of like understand the process and the motivation behind all of this stuff. Um, so first of all, I haven't talked to this dude about me talking about this in a public forum, so I'm just going to call him El Jefe. Not Jeff. Other Jeff. Uh, so El Jefe is a, an a that I met in Bryce's garage, like, 15 years ago? Long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, and he was, he was somewhat of a heavy hair in the scene, and then he's kind of dropped out for a while. And to be honest, I, I haven't seen this dude at Lug Name for probably, like, 10 years now because I'm I'm long in the tooth um so he we still stay in contact and whatnot and, you know we follow each other on social media and he he sees that I build and I do all of this bullshit um so he reached out to me and he was like hey do you want some free lego I was like yeah sure bro always fuck yeah uh so we met once and he like gave me a, a pretty cool set it was a, a lego ninjago movie set which I, I love that theme and then just like a smattering of Ziploc bags of like really cool old school stuff, like finger hinges and like really, really legit stuff. Um, and that was, you know, a couple months back and he reached out to me the other day and he was like, hey, do you want some more? And I was like, always, fuck yeah. So I kind of figured I'd get like the same size drop. Um, he told me his primary motivation for getting rid of it is that he just doesn't use it and he's taking up space and... You know, there's limited space, and he has kids, and a wife, and a garage, and it's full of shit, and he's just trying to get rid of stuff. And he's keeping, he's primarily a Bionicle builder, so he's keeping all the Bionicle, which I told him he should. Uh, but he's giving me all of his Lego. So the other night, in the middle of the night, he shows up at my house, and uh, delivers gigantic bins. Gigantic bins. Like, bins. Big, heavy bins. And he takes one out, and puts it on the floor, and I'm like... What the fuck? And then he takes another one out. He stacks that on top. And these are full. These are heavy. Uh, so it's ridiculous, right? And he's like, yeah, well, this is all my Lego, but it's also some of my son's Lego. And then he also pulls out this, which is his semi-sorted, along with, like, another stack of shit. So it's a huge amount of Lego. And it's ridiculous. And he's giving it to me for free. And... Part of the reason that he's giving it to me for free is because he knows that I will actually do something with it. So it will like serve its purpose. It won't just be a thing that disappears into the void or sits in a garage for a decade and a half. Um, so I'm obviously fucking flattered. It's fucking cool. I love getting free Lego. That's kind of the best. <laughs> it's the best Lego. Uh, but it does come with some work. And there's all kinds of fucking crazy shit in here. Like, it's wild, dude. So, I, I pour out these two unsorted bins, as you saw, in the middle of the night. And I kind of roll through it, and I'm pulling out tons of crazy stuff. But, like, all used Lego, it requires some work. And it's it's got interesting stuff. And I was like, well, do I make an episode where I just, like, fucking show you this Lego? Like, that's kind of whack. Um, but my buddy Aaron, you know Aaron. Uh, he was like, no, man, you have an immaculate collection for the most part. 
and how you process this new acquisition in is kind of fascinating. Um, so I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, we'll, we'll do it. So the first thing you have to do is the pass, the first pass. And it's the trash pass. It's the grossest. Um, you know, clone bricks, that's fine. Those go in the bin. Detris of childhood, weird random toys, marbles. There's always marbles, BBs. Um, erasers. Erasers seem to be a common multi-generational thing. Like, I don't even know if kids use pencils these days, but apparently they still have erasers. Um, and to be fair, El Jefe's son, I'm guessing is like 15. I saw him in a car once uh, with a mask on. So, you know, it's like, you could be fucking Warwick Davis. Uh, but I'm guessing he's in his teen years where he has moved beyond the Lego. So it's a fascinating sort of like carbon dating you do when you go through this because it's there's his kids toy debris which is you know story unto itself of you know things that that my my childhood unsorted would have relics of my era his childhood unsorted has things like bakugan which are like weird little balls and they like pop into animals or robots or something i don't know it's more of that like pokemon collectible stuff um, there was a lot of like just random weird little toys that I was like, oh, these are kind of interesting. Um, and then, you know, obviously the Lego and most of it is El Jefe's Lego. So there's vintage stuff, stuff that I know that's like Ice Planet and Space Police and Rock Raiders and f cool shit like that. And then there's more modern stuff. So there's a lot of Ninjago. They were like spin jitsu spinners up the fucking yin yang. Um, and then like CMFs, there was a shit ton of figs. Like, look at this bag of figs. It's fucking crazy. That's after I took what I wanted out of it. Um, so I should tell this story. Hopefully I didn't tell it earlier. Uh, about meeting Jeff in a garage. Not Jeff, Jeff. El Jefe Jeff. Um, and part of the thing that in that garage meetings, those were the, the Mecca Hub meetings back in the day at Bryce's garage, which were held at... Very specific, odd, late night time. But there were many times where, like, Bryce would buy a used collection or just get unsorted from some unscrupulous source, and he'd have a table full of unsorted. He would go, yeah, why don't you bros come over, and you can just troll through and pick out what you want, because me and B Minus have already done the first two passes, and we've pulled all of our good shit out, but there's still gold in there, and so you'd go through it, and I was like, fuck yeah. Um, so I kind of wanted to do that with this. I can't really do that in a time of COVID. So I figured I'd just pull the figs. The figs can go out to the, the whack bros and the inner circle bros and whatnot. Um, so I don't know. Who knows? Those those will be on their way. And then, of course, there's all kinds of wacky shit in here. Like, there's like weird vintage shit. This is a Scala part. It clips into, like, a piece of cardboard. Um, I got one of these. This is great. The, the four-wide street sweeper. Um... There's some, you know, dinosaur bodies. I think this is the thing that Obi-Wan Kenobi rides that makes the terrible noise. Uh, here's a crazy zap piece. Like, that's fucking wild, right? It's supposed to be a wheel. Okay. Uh, but I think it's going to be a submarine intake engine bit or a space thing or whatever. It's fucking cool. So there's cool parts. And it's cool to get a bunch of free Lego. And you have to... Do the thing, right? So there's there's multiple steps to the problem of getting this much Lego. Number one, you gotta you gotta do the trash pass. So that's that's work. And then you gotta clean it. Because it's it's childhood Lego. So uh fortunately for me, my wife is very tolerant, as you can see. Um so I also have a bathtub, like a fill of Lego. And it's it's a bathtub's. Where's the Lego? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, and then you gotta clean it. And uh, my suggestion is just warm water, dish soap, swirl it around, let it soak for a bit. Um, really, like rinsing it is probably the first step. And I've done this where I've hosed shit down outside as well. If you don't have access to a bathtub, it's just easier to do in a bathtub that's a little more controlled. Um, 
So you, you fucking rinse the shit out of it and then let it soak in some soapy water and then you rinse the shit out of it again. That's that's kind of the strategy. Uh, try not to let Lego go down your drain. I have like a hair stopper thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, get that part figured out logistically first. Because once you put the bathtub full of Lego in the bathtub, it's really not fun to get it out of the bathtub. That's probably the shittiest part of the whole deal. And then it has to dry. Um, and I live in paradise. As you can see, there's no snow outside. But still, like, three days on my floor to dry. And uh, it's really hard to fight the compulsion to just start sorting when it's all on the floor. Just hanging out. Especially, like, I had to rearrange the room, so I had to, like, move the table. And it's like, it's, a, it's an elephant in the room, dude. It's a big fucking thing to deal with. Which is a pain in the dick. Um, just... In general, it's like a psychological burden there. But it's okay, because it's like, what better problem to have? My neighbor's watering the fence. Um, so, you know, water your Lego, dry your Lego, and then you got to sort it. And that's that's the real, that's that's the problem. Um, so part of the reason why I'm doing this is like Dr. Brahm also asked, he was like, well, where the fuck do you put it all? I'm like, well, step one, the bathtub. Step two, the floor. And then step three, I have to sort it. Uh, so as it was drying, I did do some subsorting. Um, I'm going to leave El Jefe subsorting to the end because I feel like that will be much easier to deal with than this, which is what this has come down to. So it's it's kind of impressive that's condensed this far, but that that took a couple of days of work. Um, I kind of pulled, you know, all the wheels and all the big plates and all the large dishes and all the figs, like I said, like just kind of did a pass of like major categories of things that it were easy to sort. Um, anything that was like a big sub assembly too, because uh, he had like all the Space Police 3 sets that were basically assembled. So like those all get sorted first. And now it's just down to this one bin on my table, which is fucking legit. Um, and it's, you know, now now I'll have to put it in the wall, and it's going to break things. Like, I already know that, so I'm going to have to do the thing I didn't want to do, which is go higher, make the wall taller, uh, which means that the drawers will be taller than me, which is um, kind of a bummer, but, like, it's better than having things under the table. Like, I have this bin under the table right now. It sucks. Like, I don't like that style. I, I knew a lot of dudes who have, like, an island with a table on it and drawers underneath. But you can't move the table then. And, like, this is kind of a fairly limited space. And, uh, I, you know, it's ridiculous to say, but, like, I need more drawers, you know? I don't have enough. Um, so you can see I've marked, like, certain things. Uh, these will be split. That's what the tape is for, because I've already done the, the logistic Tetris cascade calculation. I think it'll work out. Um, I'm not too worried. I, I have room if I just had more. Drawers. Um, so that's where it goes, Dr. Brown. That's where it goes. And then there's there's a real nagging reason I need to do this, right? So showing off cool things like Snap and Scala and you know weird dinosaur bodies and cool stuff that I've pulled out of here. That that kind of seems a little bit like a dick move. You don't want to break rule zero. It's kind of horrible. But I think I'd be breaking rule zero if I didn't show you what else was in here. Because this is this is pretty amazing. Yes. Yes. These are new. These are unopened. Actually, I lied. So these are now open because I'm a dumbass, and I open them on camera without clicking the record button. But we're going to move past that, and we're just going to pretend like these are new and unopened, because these were new and unopened until 15 minutes ago. So first up, 2004. 2004. That's fucking 17 years old. This one's from 2005. This is the orange one. And it's crazy to me, dude. Like, these seals were... Unopened. 
I, so I opened it up. I did a thing, pulled out the knife. I don't have to do that now. Um, and these are in perfect condition, like insane perfect condition. The packaging is perfect. This is creatures, Xpod creatures. And the, the instructions and the catalog are super crispy. They're, they've never been touched, never been opened. Um, dude, this set back in the day, that robot set right there, that was the shit. Really all of these were the shit. And uh, you can see, they, they must have done different colorways because this is the red pod, this is the creatures pod, and then they show you the other ones. So it's everything I love about Lego, man. It's like these kind of predate Mixels. They have all this fucking cross compatibility. And then, like a time warp, they're fucking pristine. Look at this. Oh my god. It's like a mere finish. It's never been touched by human hands. Like, wild. And of course, because I opened them 15 minutes ago, they came in the old perf bags and all of these parts... These glorious, glorious parts have never been touched. They've never seen air before. They still have the Denmark air in them. Um, quite literally, like, the packaging. Mm, mm. They say olfactory memory is, like, the strongest memory. I completely believe that. Uh, so that's the red one. It's, it's fucking amazing. And, dude, look at this. Look at this. So this pod's never been touched, which means this clear is like amazing, amazing, fucking wild, dude. So this is set in Jeff's possession, El Jefe's possession, for a decade and a half, just waiting, waiting for somebody to do something with this, for it to be free, for it to play with your toys, man. So, that is the reason why I have to do this episode. Here's the orange one. This is the arachnopod. It's got, it's got slightly better marketing with a, a second insert. Um, look, at, look at this shit. Look at this stack. That's the new stack. And like the, uh, the other one, it was sealed. It did have the old crumply perf bag. And like the other one, is gloriously pristine, brand new. So these are fucking amazing. Um, and I feel like if I didn't show these and open these on camera, which imagine that you saw me open them on camera, that's the whole reason for this, right? Like that was actually El Jefe's motivation was when he, when he pulled this out and he was like, this is all of my Lego. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do, dude. I guess I'll build cool stuff. And he was like, that's why you're getting it. Um, so it's fucking awesome, man. I can't believe I have these. I can't believe I have this much free Lego. It's fucking incredible. Now I have somewhat of a spiritual burden to actually build things with it, which I think is good. Um, I'm going to have work to do over here. So that'll happen. And then, um, you know, life goes on. It's, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, so giant shout out to El Jefe for, for the fucking score. It's, it's a big data spike for me. Like things, things that I can do now are, are quite different. Um, one of the things he gave me is a shit ton of base plates, which like the unsorted, you also have to fucking, you know, wash and dry. Uh, if you got a dish rack, that's the pro move. And then of course, um, I don't want to leave you guys without some original Lego content. Cause like, what the fuck, dude? That's not why you show up here. You show up here for fucking Lego and beer, right? Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, we're still drinking the cores, even though it's another day. There's so many cores in the fridge. It's okay. February ovary. I had a plan. It didn't quite happen. Um, I built a thing. It's cool. It's got wheels. It's got steering. Look at that. Look at that. It's got, Double steering. Um, 
And so I was going to build a rover with this, and then I got this massive amount of Lego that I felt like I needed to deal with immediately. I couldn't just stick it under the table, have it, you know, laugh at me every time I walk by uh, like a crazy person. Um, so, you know, I needed to do that. And then also, this is kind of a test for something else. Um, I just kind of wanted to do a proof of concept of this big rack and steering, steering mechanism. And... Um, Part of the upshoot of getting this huge lot of Lego is like, you need it, right? So I'm building this stuff. I'm building a, a let's just say a larger version of this with a particular wheel tread setup. And I'm short one wheel. And I'm like, God damn it. And so I go through every bin that I own, like shit in deep storage in the closet, mocks, I Everywhere, everywhere. Every wheel bin I've got, every tire bin I've got, like everywhere these possibly can be. And my wife asked me when I get this fucking, I don't know, 80 pounds worth of Lego. Everything I judge is by like relative to how heavy my dog weighs. This at least was two dogs, so I'm going to call it 80 pounds worth of Lego. And my wife's like, but do you need this? And I'm like, well, when I opened it up and I poured it out on the floor... One of the first things I found was the wheel I needed. So yeah, I guess I needed it. Um, so I'm not just going to give you half a mock. I'm going to give you a full mock. It's not as impressive. It's not a rover, but it is wheeled. So one of the things that's been happening sort of in my, my circle of friends in the neck of the woods, it's been this four-wide town revival. This is uh, the, the shell van and the race car from... Victory Lap Speedway. I believe that's what it's called. It will forever be the best town set, in my opinion. It looks like that. Um, it's fucking incredible. You, you can build an oil rig as the alternate model, which is, like, perfect because it's shell. And uh, I always love this, dude. I love this van. Like it's, dude, it's so great. It has, the, it has so much playability going on. It's got, you know, things with doors and fucking fire extinguishers and whatnot. Um, and then the race car, this is the penultimate, like, four-wide Formula F1 race car. So everybody's been building, like, original four-wide stuff, because somehow that's, like, giving everybody the nostalgic feels, you know, nostalgic feels. Um, so I built a four-wide thing, and in the spirit of the show, it's a beer truck, because bricks and beer. So here's my dude, he's driving a truck, there's the beer, it's space beer, as one does. And uh, it's got steering, because, you know, I wanted to be fancy. And uh, it uses somewhat of a newer wheel and tire combo. So it's it's a bit of an upgrade from, you know, the OG. But I, I feel like it's it's still got the same vibes. And uh, I wanted it to kind of have a Fuso vibe. A Fuso's a, a truck. They look like that. Uh, so, you know, there's just the cab on there. And then the cab itself is one of those things that I feel like is just iconic in the four wide lego thing like people hate on minifigures because for for a valid reason they are not accurate of human anatomy they're like this weird chibi thing and yes that's true but part of their charm is that they're a weird chibi thing and what goes along with that weird chibi thing is weird chibi cars and four wide things uh so these don't conform to like you can't have two people sitting here this doesn't look anything like a real fuso if you start looking at proportions and things but like who cares because this doesn't look like a real person your mind fills in the gaps it, it does all the things it needs to do um so yeah so i guess this is my fever rovery four wide a rovery maybe that'll be a new thing um here's a bunch of other four wides that the homies have built yeah, look at this one. It's fucking fire, dude. Fire. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, four wider rovery. There's there's some builds for you. You got your thing. I got some Lego. I got some sorting to do. I got some beer to drink. Uh, I really wish I had actually been able to crack the seals live on camera, because I did. Still good. Still good. I think it still counts if it's within, like... 20 minutes of recording a YouTube video, right? It's like the 10 second rule, except for dumb internet shit. Crinkly perf bags. All right. 
I'll see you in the future. Be good to yourselves.